Here we have a Zotac RTX 4090 amp extreme that came in for repair. Melted connector. What's new? 4090s are notorious for the connector melting. We have another one here, the Gigabyte 4090 also came with the same issue. And I posted a video a few days ago, another 4090 with a broken connector. So go figure. Let's take a look at the connector. I do not see any physical damage by looking at it from the outside, but let's take a look on the inside and see what's going on. Look at this. If you look here, you can tell the plastic on the top six pins melted. And the customer wants the connector replaced. That's what we're going to be doing in this video. What happened to having three, four connectors on the board? The old fashioned way. Now they have one connector that connects with a cable that splits into four or three 12 volt inputs. And you wonder why that connector is melting. It's like trying to jam six cars in parallel in a one lane street. But what can you do? We get a 4090 almost every day for exactly the same issue. Now the board is very thick, a lot of layers, maybe 10, maybe 12, maybe 14. I did not count and I did not look it up, but the board is thick. It takes a lot of heat to desolder the connector. And I'm talking about the extreme amount of heat. You need to point heat on the board for a long period of time to desolder the connector. And for that reason, we're going to use low melt solder. Low melt solder melts at a very low temperature. When mixed with unleaded solder that's already on the board, we're going to lower the overall melting temperature of solder on the board. So let's say the solder unleaded melts at 300 degrees Celsius. And low melt solder melts at 100 degrees Celsius. When mixed, Add 300 with 100, that's 400 degrees, divided by 2. So now solder melts at 200 degrees compared to 300 degrees. That's what low melt solder does. But of course, if we apply a lot, then we're going to have more low melt than unleaded. And it will take much less temperature to desolder the joints or the connector. So without talking too much and without going back and forth, let's apply low melt solder and desolder this connector. For this, we need a big tip, a big solder ironing tip. If you are trying to do this with a tip that looks like this, a tiny tip, good luck. It's not going to happen. Even if you point your tip, the soldering iron tip, on the board for 26 years, nothing's going to happen. Even if your temperature is at 20,000 degrees. So right now, we have the temperature at 450 degrees Celsius. That's the max that we can go on the soldering iron. Fume extractor on. Because we're going to have a lot of smoke and you do not want to inhale the smoke. If you are doing this as a hobby or that's your work, that's your job, you need a good fume extractor. You need a three-layer filtering fume extractor. So basically, the fume extractor has three filters. You have the top filter, the HEPA filter, the top filter filters out big particles. Let's say my fume extractor, it sucked in this ear swab. It's going to get stuck on filter number one. Filter number two filters out microscopic particles. And the carbon filter, which is the last one, it filters out odors, smell, and other things. The fume extractor I have, I bought a long time ago. It's from Pace, Pace Evac 250, and it retails for about $1,600. I explained this when I made a video about the fume extractor that we carry and sell. And just a minute. And I went over the fume extractor that we carry and sell, the NF.fume, three filtration system. You can watch the video, just search for NF.fume, Northridge Fix, or fume extractor, Northridge Fix, and you will see it. You do not need to spend $1,600 on a fume extractor like the one I have. I bought it about 10 years ago. The NF.fume, it does exactly the same thing. Three filtration system, but the filter, instead of being big for industrial use, the filter is small. We also carry and sell all filters, the carbon, the first filter, and the HEPA filter. And of course, whatever you need, soldering station, hot air station, thermal camera, grinding pan, charging station, NF.short, voltage injection tool, tweezers, original Amtec flux, everything can be bought 
directly off our site. We have all items in stock and orders almost always ship out same day. Just log in, add items to cart, check out, and you should expect your order to ship out same day. So let's apply low melt solder. See that board takes a lot of heat. Unlike the solder did not even feel anything. I have my soldering iron on that joint and I can tell unlike it did not melt yet. That's how thick that board is. The board is probably saying, why are you tickling me? And we're going to add more low melt solder. Now we're going to do the same thing here. Now the board is absorbing the heat, so the board is getting hot. And now it becomes easier to apply low melt solder on the rest of the pins. No, it's all right. Same customer came back to use the bathroom. The bathroom is for staff only. I do not allow all customers to use the bathroom because this is not a restaurant. We do not have somebody just to clean the bathrooms. And right now we're gonna turn on our anti-glare light. Look at all the reflections here. We can barely see anything and that's why we have something called the anti-glare light. Look at this. Look at the beauty of the anti-glare light. So that connector is out. We just need to cut that last pin. Now we can remove those leftover pins. That's pin number one. And that's pin number two. Now I'm not using hot air, I'm trying to avoid using hot air because we have aluminum capacitors nearby and we have other things that can burn. So we're just using the soldering iron and a tweezer. We can also do it using hot tweezers. And the holes are free from pins. You see we have a button here and we have aluminum caps here. That's why I did not use hot air. Now we're going to apply flux. We can apply solder mask on those scratched areas just to make things better than factory and to save the wall from complaints.
hot air along with UV lamp is magic. Look at this. This UV light will shut off by itself in about 20 seconds. Now we're gonna grab a new connector and we're gonna force it down. Just like that. And I already have it down. Look at this. Look at how nice and flush that connector is. Now all we have to do is solder it from the back. And we're gonna do the same here. We're gonna apply UV light along with a little bit of hot air and watch the magic happens. I look at how solder mask hardened. I'm using hot air and UV light. A few seconds and solder mask is already hard. That's the trick I shared in the previous video talking about solder mask that you can use hot air to speed up the process. Let's make sure the connector is flush with the board, nice and flat. And now we can apply solder. And people ask what solder wire I'm using. We're using the Northridge Fix solder wire. You can also purchase off our site. We have the 0.3 millimeters and 0.8 millimeters size. I'm currently using the 0.8 millimeter size. And I use the smaller one for more microscopic work. We need to go over this one more time. Let's clean up first. We're gonna apply a lot of flux. Flux is your friend, always. Beautiful, look at this. And now we're gonna measure and make sure all the pins are making a good connection. We should have ground on the top here. Ground, 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 very good. And positive, 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 positive and positive. Of course, we're gonna have the ground here and we're all good. The connector is soldered on beautifully. And now if we flip the board and look at the other end, look at this. Look at those better than factory joints. Look at how solder made its way all the way from the bottom, all the way to the top. We have solder here, solder here, solder here, solder here, here, here. We need to clean up, of course. We have some residue of flux here, but look at every single pin. Amazing. We did an awesome job. Look at this beauty. Beautiful. Now what we can do is quickly test the cord. The cable is plugged in. And let's see. Are you able to see this monitor? And you're not. So let's look at this monitor here. I do not have the HDMI cable plugged in. It's not gonna magically, wirelessly 
output the image to the screen. So turn, we have to run away as far as we can because that's the 4090 you're talking about. If something happens, it's gonna burn this whole building down. Are we gonna see a Dell logo on the screen? We should. Yes, we got it, we got it. All right, we got it. Turn the video card off. We do not have a heat sink or fan on the video card, but a few seconds is no problem. That's it, we are done. We replaced the connector for the customer. A very common issue on the 4090s, and you cannot see me, but maybe that's a good thing. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think, leave it down in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll do something else in the next video.